Good morning, everybody. We've got a new video for you all. I got my Taco Bell right here. Let's sit down, relax, grab your food, grab your coffee, whatever you need, and let's talk about my latest project. All right, so welcome back, everybody, to my channel. I showered, I went to go get my food, got a new yarn project to just break down and possibly finish in front of you. I also got my little Coke here. Let's enjoy one of these tacos first. Today's project is this one. Check it out. Another hand-dyed yarn mixed with Lion Brand yarn. I like to mix different weights of yarn because just the thickness of the difference of yarn really adds a whole new dimension to your garment. Uh, so this hand-dyed yarn, the yellow and blue, is from Hot Knit Yarn. I'll add like a little picture here and then I'll have her website in the bottom. Hopefully you guys are able to get it just like I am. I had to wait a couple months to be able to get this yarn. This is in Jimmy Sock, which is her marine, superwash merino and nylon blend. And then the black yarn is actually using the Line Brand Jeans yarn. I'll have a picture here too, and then I'll put the link. If you do need to buy from lionbrandyarn.com, I would highly appreciate if you guys do it through my affiliate links because it gives me a small commission on the purchases after you click the link and go to lionbrandyarn.com to make an order. For some reason, whenever I condition my hair, it just doesn't want to cooperate, it's too soft. Taco number one, done. Again, so this type of scarf, you create it, you making a long rectangle. So if you were to have your arms in 90 degrees, elbow to elbow, that seems to be a good uh, indicator of like your own personal body length and stuff. A quick tip, the wider you create this garment, the more it's gonna turn out like a shawl. However, for me, I'm using this more kind of like a fashion scarf. If I keep going in terms of the width, it will reach over my, my shoulders once I connect it. I like mine to be nice and kind of tight up here in the neckline, so that way I know that the air is not coming in whenever I put on a jacket. And I think this is just a perfect length to feel like you're getting a hug here on the shoulders. That's why I don't make it too, too big. The way I began it is with a, I did a half double crochet all the way and I alternated between four yarn over coffee bean stitch and half double crochet. Then I added two rows of double crochet. And just a quick note, whenever you transition from thick to thin yarn, my method of making sure things stayed even was putting two stitches in one and then only one stitch in the other. So two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Um, and the, what that does is it prevents you from adding too many stitches. Uh, that is just an easy way to just know right off the top of your bed as you're doing it. Then I did another row of half double crochet over that. And then I began my window pane stitch for one, two, three, four, five. And I like that because it really does give it a nice, um, like a webbed look to it. Let the color do all the work. You don't need to do that much to make it an impressive garment. No, the taco fell apart. That's just a, one way of looking at it. If you have this type of busy yarn, you could definitely, less is more <laughs> is what I'm saying. And then here I did my uh, infamous front ridges, front post ridges, two, three, four, five. I did that for five rows. For these types of stitches, I would recommend going a little bit more just so that way you can actually see that that's what you're doing. Cause I think I did two little rows, amount of rows here. I try to keep things even. So since I did five of my window pane down here, five rows, I did five rows up here. And then I ended with my two half double crochet the same way I did here. So I like to balance things out and also it doesn't complicate things in your mind as you're improvising because as long as you keep things balanced, by the time you realize it, you did a lot already. So see, if you finish here, you're already halfway through on the garment. I went back and I ended it with the border that I did down here. So half double crochet and coffee bean stitch for yarn over. Just a quick note, here all I did was keep the coffee bean stitch and the half double crochet together. And then I skipped one stitch and did it again. So every, on the third stitch, you're skipping pretty much. That helps you keep things even once again when you're switching from now the thin yarn to the size four jeans. By the way, you guys like my little Christmas tree? <laughs> what a good friend of mine. She gave me this um, ball of yarn ornament right there that you see. And that was a custom made one of chef's hat by another dear friend of mine. And here I just did a nice, simple half double crochet window pane, half double crochet window pane. The idea here was to give you a nice, thick black band colorway to break apart this color. 
And then my original plan was to just keep decreasing this black bar. I believe this is four rows. And then I would do a bar of three rows of black, then two rows of black, and then one line of black. And then, yeah, and then I ended it with a two row, with a one row of half double crochet, same thing, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then I just did one window pane, one half double crochet, one window pane, one half double crochet. And once again, you can increase these, you can repeat these rows if you need more width for your garment. I don't care what people say, when you're able to eat messy, just go for it. It's the best kind of meals you have. Where you eat a broken taco. <laughs> a preview of one of my next projects I'm gonna show you. Look at that. Bam! Ooh! That looks so cool on camera. Make sure you subscribe so you stay notified as soon as I upload that video. And then I also have the Scooby-Doo collection uh, shawls that I'm going to be doing. Yes, shawls, plural. If you pre-order her collection, you will have plenty of yarn to do at least three shawls and a pair of socks. So stay tuned for that. I cannot wait to show you my design for that. Uh, I haven't cut the yarn, so that's why I'm struggling a little bit when I'm showing it to you because the yarn is going to be tangled. But I don't cut my yarn until the very, very end. And the reason for that is because if you need to make a border with one of these yarns, it's always easier to uh, do it without cutting. Also, a little quick tip. Here on the side where I pick my yarn to go up, and you can see I kind of messed up here. So my black yarn technically ended down here, and I needed to get this black yarn all the way up here. And could you imagine if I did one of these just stranded yarns all the way over here with the black yarn. So what I did was here, when I needed to move it up, I literally just let go of my hand dyed yarn over here and you just pick up the yarn and you start doing single crochets along the edge until you get to where your black yarn needs to be used again. That's another tip that you can use. It avoids, it gives you a border. You're killing two birds with one stone while at the same time bringing up your yarn with you. Color Wave in particular gave me Electabuzz, if you know about Pokemon. Or like TV static vibes. So when it came to the cable work, I wanted to reflect the uh, sound wave. Instead of doing three going to the right, like you would in a typical cable, I did just, I picked a direction. So all of these are going from, uh, right to left. So I did zigzag, straight line, zigzag, straight line, zigzag. I don't know if it's showing up. There you go. And I'm literally just making it up as I go. As you can tell, technically I should have gone the other way on this one, but that's okay. It gives it this nice, cool, zigzaggy effect, and you just go as long as you need. For example, for me, since I realized I didn't do this long enough, I'm adding this extra part to elongate my garment. And I purposely want this to be here on the shoulders because I want your eye to go to the cable work. So let me go ahead and get my hooks ready and I will close this up for you and you guys will see what it's supposed to look like once I wear it. I did use two different hook sizes for this project just so you know. I use the uh, H hook, five millimeter hook whenever I use the jeans yarn and I used a 3.5 E millimeter hook whenever I use the hand dyed yarn. And you just fold this part over. Use your right side to get the pointy part to point at the chest. And then you accommodate your left side to know exactly where you are got to go. As I started from the inside collar, going out to close the seam. Since we started from the collar out, now you have the opportunity here to do a border along the entire garment. I cut it yet because I want to see if I need to adjust anything, but here we go. Oh, wow, guys, that looks so good. Look at that. Ah, and see, I made it wide enough so that way it can go over my shoulders if I have to and it won't like, you know, you're not stretching it out or anything. It just nicely lands on your shoulder and you feel like you're getting like a nice little hug. This is the same one ball of hand dyed yarn and this is one ball of jeans. So look at how much you can actually make. Not even using half, uh, I would say you used about halfway. So you have more than half of the ball left and at least half of the jeans yarn left over. I'm doing an executive decision and literally doing a single crochet border all the way around so that way it's nice and clean. And then also by the time I cut it back when it comes here, um, I can just hide the yarn better.
Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check Give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead Don't step to me newbie, I could truly be moody I could have played the Uh, doing the does it look good in natural lighting slash is Will it keep me warm while I throw the garbage? Mm. Oh, look at how that color pops, guys oh, I love this, I love this color, so nice How that pops, ooh, ooh, ooh It is cold though, so I would not recommend wearing this as a sweater But it is nice to keep you <laughs> Just to keep you snug while you're outside. So yeah, this is my design. Let me know what name I should give it. I'm horrible with giving my garments names. So let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you are interested in more designs. Like I said, my goal is to give you guys one shawl or one scarf design a week at least. There is always going to be a master class. So after I post this, I will do a live master class afterwards in which you can literally ask me live questions about this particular yarn or design. Look for my live video that accompanies this garment and there I hopefully will answer your questions. So thank you so much everybody for joining me and I will see you guys in the next video. All right, let's give a special shout out to our Limon Crochets members. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for your support. You help motivate me to always put the best content for you all. And if you want to join the, the family, you can go ahead and click that join button and see the extra perks that I do for my members. Quick shout outs to the Limon Influencers. I see you, Noemi Torres and Blanca Valtierras. Thank you so, so much. And to our Limon Inner Circle members, we got Karen Millet in the house. Cocktails and Crochet with Coco and Araceli Pintado. Thank you so much. And to everyone in the Limon family tier, you guys are awesome. Stay beautiful. And I'll see you in the next video.